Coming right back. Phones are open. We're at 877-367-2526. Think Ditto Heads only call other radio hosts? Alan's got his own. Go to hell, you lefty. Ah, you could do better than that. Give it a try at 877-4-ALAN. 877-367-2526. Bring them on. Alan Coles. You know, the other day I said, you know, Tom in Wabino, Wisconsin, hasn't called us for a while. We haven't heard from him. And then uh, he shows up. He's here. I can't believe you want to get a little closer to the microphone. Sure. Have you been on radio before, like in our studio? No, sir. No. Tom calls us all the time. He, he, he's a stat guy. He calls us with who's called the show, how many whites, how many blacks, how many Hispanics, who's gay, who's straight. And and uh, I had forgot you had said you were going to be in New York. And I said, stop by when you are. And Harry... Let me know today that uh, you're here, and here you are. So nice to meet you in person. And here we are. It's nice to meet you, too. What do you think? Is this uh, not a bad outfit here? I mean, uh, I like it in here. Well, you don't like it with the controller? It's not good enough for you? No, I'd rather be in here with you. I see. He says, like, can I come in? Like, hey, it's my co-host all this time. That's right. Uh, So, so, uh, but no stats today, right? You have no No, stats? No, I have all the the shows since I've been off work are on my laptop, but I haven't had a chance to listen to them. You don't don't have to do homework. You don't have to listen to all the shows. Sure, I do. It's not not necessary to go back. It's a lot of work to do. So, Tom Orbino is here. He'll sit in a little bit here, and uh, uh, usually you're on the phone, so it must feel odd for you to be here. It's odd for me to have you here in person. I thought you were like an older guy. You're like uh, 25 years old. I'm a young, good-looking guy. Yeah, right. <laughs> you know, you never know with voices, right? That's right. You never know. Uh, so, you're, so it's a good demographic for us. And your lovely uh, bride is here with you as well. My wife. You just celebrated, what, 20? 28 years. 28 years. Yesterday. Congratulations. That's great. And we're spending it in New York. You're spending it in New York, which is a, that's a good expensive gift to give your wife as a trip to New York, right? Tell her that. Yeah, I think she she just said she should be very – and that's got to be tough as a trucker. You're on the road how much of the time? I usually stay out two to three weeks at a time. I could get home every eight to ten days, but um, it sort of doesn't work right. out pay-wise. So that's what keeps the marriage going, the fact that you're not home very often. That's what I tell people. I'm not home night, so it keeps – that's why I don't have any kids. That's what kept yeah. it going when I was on the <laughs> road for the first 21 years. Right. Then I was off for four years because I had an accident, um, uh-huh. and I ended up having to go back on the road. And now it's been tough since I was off for four years. I see. It's okay. very hard being out there now. But you're out there again. Yeah. And that's, uh, it's, uh, you know, we've had, you know, we have a lot of truckers, you know, listening to the show. And it's, I got to hand it to you guys. People don't realize in, with commerce would stop in this country with that. What you do for a living? You just okay. take a, ro- a look around your studio and your right, and Hold and even door. in your home, and you'd be hard pressed to find this, something that wasn't transported on a truck from right. start to finish. And you guys could you could literally put an end to the economy if you guys went on strike. You could stop you could stop the country. Could we you? could, but you wouldn't believe it, Alan. There is no solidarity in among truck, truckers. Among truckers, no. Why is that? Uh they they would argue whether the sun was shining or not. So it's hard to get them all together. To, you oh, yeah. have a union, right? Uh, some companies are union. Are you not union? Not everybody is a union. Right. Uh, the last company I worked for was union. Um, the company I work for now is not. Okay, uh, so so you, uh, without having union protection, how does that affect you? Would you be better with a union shop, or does it make a difference one way or the other? I believe everybody would be better with a union shop. Uh-huh. Um the union shops that are in the trucking industry now are what help keep my wages up, though. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Without the union companies, I, I think right. their wages would be down. That's what I, my argument truckers. has been for when there are shops. People want, I don't want to have to pay dues. I want the right not to work. Or rather, you know, the right to work laws where you don't have to join the union. But the unions negotiate that help all of the workers, even if you're not a member of the union. So you're benefiting. Exactly. Right? Even if you're not a member. Right. Exactly. So, so you're benefited as a result. Yeah, I believe that's yeah. the way it works. And also the rules in terms of how many hours you can spend on the road before you have to stop. Truckers complain all the time that it gets in the way of commerce, doesn't it? We're getting to where you need to be. It does, but I believe it's it's for the good. We are allowed to drive 11 hours in a 24-hour period mm-hmm. before we have to take a 10-hour break. We can drive 11 hours and work 
outside the truck, loading or unloading the sure. truck for but three hours. But if you're hours. not at a destination, there's no place to load. I mean, you, you're going across country. It could be days before you get to your destination. Right. right. My my average run is usually thirteen to fourteen hundred miles. Mm -hmm. So that'll take me two days to get there. I see. Um, and no, there's no place to do any work outside of inspecting yeah. my vehicle in the morning and in the evening. And uh, so that does not come off your log books. I see. And what kind of stuff do you, do you carry? Is it going to be anything? I usually haul paper products because I live in northern Wisconsin. I see. So that's uh, you do the business with the same vendors. Yes, all the time. We'll take a couple of calls here, and, and you can talk to our callers as well. And yeah. uh, this is what it's like being on the other side of the microphone. Okay, this I'll, is what I'll it, give this it a shot. Did you, did you have a, a, a thing in your head about what it looked like to be here? Um, I've I've watched you on the uh, on the video screen on the video screen because yeah. I am a Podcast subscriber. Podcast subscriber. Yeah. Okay. Um, since I've been off work the past three weeks, I checked you out a couple times on the podcast. I see. Okay. So you had a rough idea, but it's probably still different thing. In, in oh person, yeah, it's right? very different. Because you see like a sliver of it in a dark room on the. Uh, we keep, as you can tell, we keep the lights down. Mm -hmm. Nighttime. I like that. It's nice. So let's go to Joseph here in Salt Lake City. Hi, Joseph. Hey, long time no talk, sir. Your libertarian friend from Salt Lake. I was agreeing with you last time we talked. You probably agree with me now on the NSA stuff, right? Uh, I actually do. Uh, I, I'm totally against the, the NSA stuff, and I, I think it's disgusting what our government's doing. And, and it's like a lot of the people who are really for what Obama's doing right now were really against it. When well, Tom and I were just talking about that off the air here before we sat down. Uh, in front of the mic, and, and you know, but I got the same thing with con conservatives or liberals. If you've got to have the same position, no matter who the president is, I was against it with Bush. I'm against it with Obama. I, you and I are a hundred percent in agreement on that. Let me answer one thing on the union thing. I yeah. for, uh, are you a trucker? I'm not a trucker. Um, I, I I work in the telecom industry. Uh -huh. which competitor is union, and we are non-union. Okay. And I can tell you, we're paid for. We get better vacation. We have better upward mobility. Mm -hmm. Honestly, I've gone down the list of everything that, that their union has negotiated versus right. what we get for free market. Uh -huh. We're better on everything. <laughs> I say, Tom, you want to weigh in on this? Or? Yeah. Would you agree that, that the reason for that is is because the company you work for does not want the union to get in there? No, I wouldn't at all. Um, I, I would say that, that they pay people based on how well they do. I started out at $10 it. an hour. I will tell you, I make a lot more than that now. Mm -hmm. uh, but but just like you know, a long long time ago when Henry Ford revolutionized the auto industry and, and increased wages and reduced the worker hours because he wanted well, better workers, the down. company that I work for pays more for people that they believe are better workers. If we are a bad worker, we get fired. If we are a good worker, we get paid well. Yeah. And that's the thing that, that's missing with unions: people don't get fired. I have to throw somebody under the bus. All right, man. Thank you very much. Appreciate your call. Craig in Brookfield, Illinois. Hi. Hi, Alan. How are you? Say hello you know, to Tom. I, hi, Tom. You know, uh, Alan, you, I, in my opinion, you have the uh, best show on radio, but certainly the best. I mean, you obviously haven't heard enough shows, but uh, go ahead. Right. But you know <laughs> what? You're on that uh, time uh, lag because you actually in Chicago are on a different time. Yeah, CPT and, carries um, us uh, in, in the evening, but uh, a lot of people listening to us on the stream as well. And CPT the, has a stream. Yeah. The comment that you had made about um, the union uh, truckers, I'm a union uh, firefighter paramedic, and but, you know, going back to union history, you know, when Reagan came along and basically destroyed the union, I still cannot believe that when he did, you know, did was despicable acting, did yeah. the traffic, air traffic control. Did with Patco, right. The whole AFL-CIO didn't just shut down the yeah, country. Huh. And so yeah. you, until you start, you know, bringing these guys well, back, you right know, right. Um, I, I don't understand why that did not happen at that period. Tom, time. remember the Patco uh, deal with Reagan? I mean, as soon as he became president, he shut down the air traffic controllers and basically said, you know, uh, I mean, he, you know, he clearly was, and this is a guy who was the head of the Screen Actors Guild. He was a union yeah, president. Yes, yeah, yes, yeah, right, right. Um, you know, the other thing too was with Ralph Nader. The... He's one of my personal and heroes, in my opinion. He's responsible for saving an incredible number of lives uh, with his mm -hmm. Unsafe at Any Speed. Unsafe at Any Speed was his breakthrough book that talked about the auto industry. 
In fact, there is a pin on your door on virtually every vehicle called the Nader pin. And when we're cutting people out of a vehicle after an accident, that's what you have to kind of aim for because that holds that door so solid. Previous to that, the doors would fly open and people were... I didn't know they call it the Nader pin? Yes, right. And, uh, but, uh, I, like I said, I, I was off a little bit, missed him. I was, I was uh, hoping to get him, but I'm very happy to talk to you and Tom. So you have a good day. All right. Thank you very much. So Tom, you're in New York. You're in the big city, uh, from Webino, Wisconsin. Is it an intimidating? Well, city I grew up here in there? Milwaukee. So well, that's I'm a big city. Of, yeah. I'm sort of yeah. used to the big city thing. However, there's nothing, you know, to uh, speed kills at any speed. <laughs> I'll tell you what, the ride from the airport to our hotel last night. Yeah. I'm a volunteer EMT as well. Uh-huh. So you took a cab? We took a shuttle, sir. A oh, shuttle, okay. Same right. difference. But, yeah. And uh, how was the driver? <laughs> <laughs> well, you're a professional, right? I know, so, and it was intimidating to me, Alan. I mean, right. I drive for a living, go through yeah. these big cities. Well, wait till you get into a, a New York. If you take a New York cab, I don't know if you've done that yet. But, you know, luckily, we got a great subway system here, so you can get anywhere you need to go for less money and, and quickly. But New York cabbies are kind of known to kind of weave around a little mm-hmm. bit. And, well, we yeah. just bought two passes for the subway system for one week, so I think we'll yeah. stick with that. No, good luck. Uh, great to meet you. Stick around. Have, have yourself a good time here tonight. Uh, we don't have uh, a green room here with treats. Uh, I wish we had that for you, but, uh, you know, we, we don't have a lot of people passing through. But, uh, Send Harry out for a beer. I think Harry would like that very much. Mm-hmm. Uh, I want to come back with Jay Kirk Weeby. He is a former NSA senior analyst. Uh, and he is one of the early whistleblowers, had 30 years at the NSA, one of the developers of the information processing system called Thin Thread, and why they didn't take it, and what they did to harass him after he spoke out. And your calls at 877 4 Allen.